You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, your most gracious host. And today, I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of Southern flavor from a awesome, beautiful, magnificent Atlanta, Georgia. Guess what? I'm so grateful that you've joined me from all over the globe. And if you're listening to this recording, I can truly say with all of the faith that's on the inside of me that I believe that your life will never be the same again. Well, how are you doing? Uh, I hope that you're having a great day. And before I get started, I want to give a special shout out uh, to all of the military. Uh, I got to receive the email from a person in the military and they said, Constance, uh, we want you to give us a shout out. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for what you're doing all over the globe. And uh, all of us in America really appreciate and love you. Well, I have a great show in store for you today. My very special guest is Pam Groud. Of course, all of you guys know that Pam is the number one New York Times bestselling author of E Squared. And she has a new book out, Thank and Grow Rich. Not think, but Thank and Grow Rich, a 30-day experiment in shameless gratitude and unabashed joy. So she's going to really be talking to us about how we can begin to be grateful and thankful and bring more abundance into our lives. Well, let's see here. Of course, I want to thank all of you for your emails. Uh, Of course, if this show uh, is shifting, changing, uh, really uplifting, inspiring, motivating your life, uh, you can email me at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com and just let me know what's going on with you. I would love to connect with you. And additionally, of course, you can visit my website at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. I have a brand new photo on there. I just recently uh, completed a photo shoot and you can see me in very casual attire and you can see me dressed up and looking really fly and that the website is fulfillingyourpurpose.com. While you're there, you could check out my blog. And of course, uh, I know this show is changing your life. And I want to thank you in advance for your donation. You can just donate with that big red donate button. And of course, you can visit my uh, store where you can take a look at my coaching packages, my affirmations, my two books, Secrets of Success and How to Attract Genuine Love. Well, I want to give you my tip for the weekend. I don't know what Pam is going to say, but I want to talk about um, gratitude, praise, and worship from a biblical perspective. I think Pam will be talking probably from a scientific perspective and how I think that your praise and your gratitude and your worship can really bring abundance and, and, and riches into your life. So uh, I'm just going to say up front that uh, one of my biggest weapons or secrets that I use every day in my life is worship praise and thanksgiving to God. You know, and I had to learn this because for years, many of you know, I was so moved by my feelings, by my circumstances and my environment. And and I had to learn that. I had to learn that if I wanted to rule and reign in my life, I just couldn't be shaky like that. So I can truly say that when I praise God in spite of my circumstances, in spite of what I see, it really takes my mind off of what's going on in my life 
And really what it does is it helps me to see how big God is and, and how much God loves me. Uh, so what does the Bible say? This is just a couple of things because we are going to be talking about thank and gratitude and joy. Uh, these are just a couple of verses. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let us offer sacrifices of praise to God. How often continually rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Praise the Lord for it is good to sing praises to our God, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Uh, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Be thankful in all things. And then lastly, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy and do it forever. How did you feel when I was reading those? I mean, the vibration changed, the energy changed. You know, the Bible says that the word of God is alive and active and that is energy. And so what would happen in your life if every day you begin to be thankful and grateful? And so uh, additionally, in the Old Testament, there was a, a story about this guy named Jehoshaphat. What a name, right? <laughs> okay, and uh, so the story goes like that there was a big army surrounding him and he was afraid. And the Bible says he didn't know what to do. And he prayed. Hey, that's a good thing for all of you listening. When you don't know what to do, pray. And God told him, send out the singers and the praisers and let them go first. Isn't that interesting? Why Why wouldn't God say, send out your army? And what happened was that when the singers and the praisers went first, that uh, they defeated the enemy. And so what are some enemies or some hindrances or some things that you want to shift and change in your life? What would happen if you praise, gave thanksgiving for, was grateful for what you had and for God being in your life? Could it stop? some of the things that are currently or circumstances that are currently happening in your life. So your uh, challenge for this week or your assignment for this week would be to be grateful, to be thankful, to praise and worship instead of allowing your current circumstances to rule and reign over you. Aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of your circumstances just jerking you around every day and, and you know every morning so you know you are a king and a queen you are a powerful super spiritual being in the universe so we're just not going to allow our circumstances it's a choice that you can make to be grateful to be thankful to worship etc and you know all of the experts talk about the power of where you place your attention your your focus and energy, energy, and that you literally create more of that. So this week, no complaining, no whining, um, just simple thanksgiving, simple praise, worship, being grateful, being appreciative for what you do have. And when you catch yourself kind of slipping away from that to bring yourself back to that. Just in my own life personally, I just have five, sometimes five minute intervals where I do that, where I just intentionally and do deliberately focus in only on what I want and the goodness of God in my life. So we're going to go to these quick commercials and then I'm really excited to hear uh, what my friend Pam Grout has, has to say. So stay tuned. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? 
Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. It's here, it's hot, and it's a must read. It's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. I'm back and I'm really excited about my guest today. And I know you're saying, Constance, you say that every Sunday. And, and I'm always excited, but especially today, my very special guest and friend is Pam Grout. Uh, Pam is a world traveler, a loving mom, a best-selling author, a millionaire, and an inspiring witness to everyone she meets, and I can vouch for that. She is the author of 16 books, my goodness, three plays, a television series, and two iPhone apps. She writes for People Magazine, um, CNN, Go.com, Huffington Post, and her travel blog. Uh, it, this is so funny. She has written enough magazine articles that she has not starved over the last 20 years without a nine to five job. So she has a new book that will be released this fall and it's entitled Thank, T-H-A-N-K, and Grow Rich, a 30-day experiment in shameless gratitude and unabashed joy. So Pam Grout, welcome again to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I was thrilled when I got your email about getting on because I just love you and I'm just <laughs> just so excited to be able to talk to you again. We had so much fun on that cruise. We did. Well, you know, you and I were sitting in the back of Jules' van going to LAX uh, um, airport, and you said, Constance, I have a new book that I'm writing. And when you told me the name of that book, Think and Grow Rich, I'm like, man, that ain't nothing but a God idea. And I said to you, I really want to interview you when that book comes out, and that's why uh, I sent you an email. Wow so really excited about. So let's just go ahead and get started, Pam. Uh, tell us about your new book. Well, you described, you know, the subtitle kind of says it all. It is, you know, like I kind of, I guess the book that everybody thinks of me for is E-Square, and it's a book with experiments. Mm -hmm. So this is another book with an experiment. It's actually a 30-day experiment. And literally, I've got, well, I call them party games. I've got 37 party games that I encourage people to try. But um, but there's one big experiment that goes on for 30 days and I literally have this earnings report sheet and so um, it's so I say here's the five kinds of capital. So I talk about different kinds of capital and how by using gratitude, by using some of these, getting on this joy and gratitude frequency allows miracles to come into your life. But the five types of capital that I talk about um, you know, financial capital is fine and it's a, a wonderful thing, but I'm talking about like creative capital, spiritual capital, adventure capital, social capital, and um, let's see, what is the other one? Oh, alchemic capital, you know, the ability to make changes in your life, to evolve, to, you know, to go in that direction. And the big thing is about just um, always going towards that which makes you feel most alive. That's what I encourage people to do. But anyway, there's all these, again, I don't want to call them exercises. I call them party games of things for people to try in order to become more grateful, to get on that frequency of joy and gratitude. Because when, when you're not on that frequency of joy and gratitude, you fail to see all these amazing gifts that are around you all the time. And the things you're trying to manifest, the things you're trying to attract, instead you're attracting from that frequency of 
oh, life's not working out for me, or I'd love to have that, but I don't really deserve it. Or You know what I mean? So you have mm -hmm. to be on that frequency where you're only spotting joy, you're only spotting miracles. And then it, the universe can just work in your life so easily. It doesn't have to fight to get in. So, so explain to listeners, what are just some general principles about gratitude? What happens to us when we are grateful? What can gratitude do in our thinking, in our brains, and, and how, does, how does that manifest miracles? Well, you know, there's a real interesting study that I talk about in the book, and it was in, I don't, I don't have the book in front of me yet. It uh -huh. hasn't actually come out, and I don't remember, but it's some scientific journal, a very well-known, well-respected journal. And they actually did a study where they, they showed people different things. And when, and they, they had, you know, electrodes attached to their brain. And when they were in grumpy mood, you know, they were unhappy, complaining, and not in a good mood, they missed, their, oh, it, it was their visual cortex. Their visual cortex literally missed 50% of what was there. However, these, but the, uh, the test subjects, you know, that were in a happy mood, that, you know, felt positive, that were, you know, looking forward and being grateful, they were able to spot all the things that these scientists were asking them to, to actually find. And so I talk about, you know, that experiment in E squared about the girl that was at the, was at the airport and she was waiting for the bus and she was in a really grumpy mood and she was complaining because the bus wouldn't come. And my friend sat there and watched this bus passed her three times but she was in such a grumpy mood that she couldn't even see it and so it really is true that when you're not practicing gratitude when you're complaining when you're unhappy you miss so much so that's why it's just so important I mean it's literally like a radio frequency you know like if you're tuned into ABC you can't watch NBC I mean you have to get tuned into the frequency where the universe can work with you and that that's what gratitude is all about. And I'm talking about militant gratitude. I'm talking about in your face gratitude. I'm talking about being grateful for everything. Because, you know, Constance, if we really do trust and we know that this universe has our back, that it really is wanting to bless us, then whatever happens, we have to know that it's part of the bigger picture and that it's moving us in that direction. You know, so in some ways, like having gratitude is even like kind of having faith, if you look at it yeah. that way. And so when you say militant gratitude, what does that mean? That means being grateful for everything. Because here's the problem. Mm -hmm. We start judging things. We go, oh, this is a bad thing. You know, this is a bad thing that happened. Well, once we judge something, that just cuts off the flow. It completely cuts it off. So we have to stay open. We don't really have enough information to judge what is good and what is bad. I mean, we can have our preferences, of course, but you know what? The, there's something a whole lot bigger going on. And I guess when you get into that gratitude state, when you're on that frequency of the joy and gratitude, that bigger thing that's going on has a better way of working in your life because we're the only ones putting up the resistance. We're the ones that, you know, block it. And so it sounds like you have to deliberately determine where you're going to put your focus and attention. Exactly. I mean, that's just so, so, so important. You know, there's, I, I write about this in the book, but you know that movie, um, I think it was called A Few Good Men where um, Tom Cruise has Jack Nicholson up on the witness stand. Do you remember that movie? Mm -hmm, I remember that. And he kept saying, you know, he's trying, he goes, did you call a code red? And he just keeps badgering him and badgering him. And, you know, um, Jack Nicholson finally gets really mad. He's getting madder and madder. And Tom Cruise is, you know, working to get him upset. And finally, Jack Nicholson bursts out and he goes, you can't handle the truth. And that's exactly what the universe is saying to us every day. It's like, you know, here's the truth. There's this abundant world out here. There's so much I want to bless you with, guide you, um, you know, interact with you. And you're sitting there in your grumpy frequency and you're not letting it in. You can't handle the truth kind of thing. Well, wow, you know, that is so powerful. So so for anyone who's listening, whose circumstances might, they might just feel like, well, I'm just in a really difficult place. What should they do? And I want everybody to hear this because it's really a decision. Let's just say someone who is really facing really difficult financial times. Well, you know what? You've got to start looking tiny little seed, tiny little seed of something you can be grateful for. I mean, that bill collector may be knocking on your door. 
Um, you know, there may be bills piled up, you know, clear to the ceiling. But you know what? The sun still came up this morning and you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do anything for that sun to come up. You know, rain still falls from the sky. That's free liquid falling from the sky. So you have to start with something, even if it's really small. But the tiniest little seed of gratitude, it's, it's causative energy. It literally can grow into a much bigger thing. But when you stay on your focus of how awful it is, the ain't it awful blues, I mean, as long as you're on that, that the good stuff cannot get in. I mean, it literally is blocked. And I really say, you know, like this, this force that wants to bless us is right there like that bull at the rodeo gate. You know, it's just waiting to charge out the minute we can get on that frequency of gratitude. So what I would say to somebody is come up with some small thing they can be grateful for. And all of us can think of something, you know, we've got um, you know, a roof overhead. I mean, sometimes if you, if you don't have a roof over your head, you've got, um, again, the sun that came up, mm -hmm. there's grass in the park, there's trees out there, there's a beautiful blue sky. I mean, there's always something. So you have to start really small and then you kind of start developing your muscles. And then the more you start appreciating, the more the universe can bless you. And it really does work that way. I mean, think about it. It's like, you know, a parent that, that their kid doesn't appreciate the toys they already have. It's like, why would they give them any more toys? You know, you have to start appreciating what you have. And if you feel you don't have anything, then just start looking. I mean, use your imagination for what you can be thankful for. I mean, that's what, you know, I've got what I, like I said, what I call party games. I mean, some of them are, you know, saying thank you in advance for what you want, saying thank you for ridiculous things, saying thank you for insignificant things, saying thank you for, you know, every, every moment you get into that frequency of thinking of what is going right in the world, focusing on that. Wherever we put our attention, we animate that reality into our life. So you put your attention on what you have to be grateful for, then you're going to animate a much more pleasing reality. You know, and I just love it when you said thanking, uh, thanking the universe or thanking God in advance. Uh, sometimes when I'm coaching people, I always say, man, when you can be grateful for something before your five senses have experienced it, it's a powerful form of faith. And so if you could just say, you know, thank you for the great job that's on its way and you move toward that and you're grateful for that. And so that's what I would even say to listeners, just to be thankful for what's on its way. So it's like using your imagination. I thank you for, you know, the healthy body that I now have. I thank you for, um, you know, that check that's going to be coming in the mail. I thank you for, um, you know, the abundance that is my divine right as a child of God. I thank you for that because that is the truth. And so, you know, Pam, you mentioned trust. So, you know, when, when the circumstances are so glaring, how can we begin to trust and be grateful in the midst of stuff what would you say well again we kind of sometimes have to start small and you know I think it's important to maybe go general you know if you can't think of anything specific in your own life then sometimes you do have to go more general like well thank you um, for example that you have five toes that you can wiggle and if you don't even have five toes well thank you that you have arms or you know or just thank you for something that you can think of that you have. I mean, for one thing, you're alive. You woke up this day, and as long as you're alive, Thich Nhat Hanh always says, as long as you're alive, everything is possible. <laughs> so mm. just even being alive, I mean, having this gift to be here on this planet, in this giant universe. I mean, there are galaxies that go on and on and on, and, you know, we're here. We're alive. We get to be here, and that's a gift. You know, we have to really recognize that as the gift that we have just to be here and be alive. Well, you know, the Bible says, be thankful in all things. Exactly. And, and so I was like, whoa. And, and I was sharing with you before we started recording how I heard this morning about how when you complain, it really stops increasing your life. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So so I love the, the subtitle, um, a 30 day experiment in shameless gratitude and unabashed joy. So talk a little bit about joy for us. When you're grateful, do you become more joyful? How does that work? Well, you know, I think joy comes from within. And I think a lot of people think, oh, when this happens, then I'll be joyful. But actually, joy, you just mentioned the word decision, and that's really important. You know, I am going to be joyful today. I am going to be, gra to be grateful today. I know sometimes I, 
I remember one time I was walking across my kitchen floor, and I don't even remember where I was doing. You know, I was going to the sink or whatever, and just this overwhelming feeling of joy and gratitude came over me. It was like this beautiful thing. There was no reason. I mean, there was nothing that happened. There was nothing, you know, but it's just like, oh my gosh. It's like, I call it the divine buzz. You just feel this, 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 um, I don't know, this frequency like moving through your body. It's like we're all connected to that bigger thing, but we're not always aware of it. So I think sometimes when we become really acutely aware of it, like I was in that moment as I was walking across the kitchen floor, it's just this beautiful thing. So I guess, you know, joy really does come from within. And that's a really good thing to know. You don't have to wait for I don't know, whatever it is you think you're trying to manifest or whatever it is you think is going to make you happy, it actually does come from within. And then because whatever's on the inner is then reflected on the outer, as you become more joyful and happy on the inner, then your outside world will begin to reflect that. So can being grateful um, and just being appreciative of what you have, can, can it make you rich? I'm talking about money now. Right. Well, I certainly think it can. However, like I said, in this book, I talk about five different kinds of capital. Mm -hmm. And I also talk a lot about how financial capital is a result of your other capital. Because there's so many hmm. different kinds of capital. I think our society's been so focused on financial capital, almost to the um, to the detriment of all the other kind of capital. Like there's great capital in having friends and having people that you can have dinner with, discussions with, that you can love. I mean, that is capital. That is great capital. And I think we tend to overlook that. So I have, like I said, five different kinds of capital. And I think they're very important, and I think as you develop those five kinds of capital, the financial capital will come in, because the universe wants to take care of us. The universe is set up to take care of us, but because we often block it, we're not seeing it. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that as we become more aware of all the different kinds of capital, the social capital, spiritual capital, um, creative capital. See, that's the thing. There are so many great ideas out there. There is so much creative capital. You know, that comes from our imagination. And that's where the financial abundance or the financial capital comes from is from using our spiritual capital, from using our creative capital, from using our social capital. So I think what I'm trying to say is that as we work on those kinds of capital, the financial capital is almost like the least of our worries. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about creative capital because I knew that when I was um, in the back of uh, Jules' van with you and you and I were just sort of talking, when I heard your title, I'm like, wow, where did she get that from? <laughs> and <laughs> that's going to be a New York Times bestselling book. And so how can people really cultivate um, more creative capital? Well, you know, I... I give a test in the book and I also gave this test in my TED talk and you know there's that there's the um, you know the LSAT test to see if you can get into law school there's the mm -hmm. MCAT to see if you can make it in medical school well this is my test for whether or not you are a creative person and and it, it's being offered here you know totally free it has one question are you breathing <laughs> <laughs> And if you are breathing, you are highly creative. All of us are highly creative. Now, many of us have cut off that connection, but the truth of it is we all have lots of ideas. We all have, but we don't think it's important. See, we, we, we've cut off that part of ourselves, but the truth is, well, okay, here's the thing. We are connected to this bigger force, this creative force. I mean, the universe, God, I mean, I always say, you know, God is the big creator. The universe is the big creator. I mean, it's constantly creating, constantly evolving, and we're part of that, and we're here to channel that creativity, to, to create the good, the holy, and the beautiful. I mean, that's our job here on planet Earth, is to create the good, the holy, and the beautiful, and that's why we're here. Not to spend our time um, complaining, not to spend our time worrying about what's wrong or coming up with seven steps to fix this or fix that, but to literally create, to create worlds. 
And so for someone who really desired more creativity, would they just begin to say, uh, uh, God, thank you for more creativity. Thank you that I'm open to new ideas, um, that I'm open to inventions. I mean, is that what they should do in order to put themselves in the vibration of gratitude, which will produce more increase in that uh, creativity area? Well, I think making that intention or praying to God is a really good first start. Say, look, I am open. Say, you know what? Help me be open to my gifts, the things that I am meant to do. Because we're all given gifts. We all have a blessing to give to the world. I mean, that's why we're here, to give our blessing. So I, I something real practical that I can recommend to mm -hmm. people, just to kind of get that creative muscle flowing, I say come up with three ideas every day. I have I get a little um just those cheap notebooks. I think right now it's you know getting to be back to school time. I think you can I just saw them on sale for like a penny a piece. I'm just talking about the cheap, you know, three ring mm -hmm. notebooks and write down three ideas every day. Don't edit it. Don't worry about if it's any good. Because what happens if you say to the universe, I'm willing to be here for you, those ideas will start coming. You know, at first you may have terrible ideas or they may not be useful ideas, but you've started, you know, opening that channel. And that's what you have to do. It's like, you know, the kitchen sink, you know, you come home after you've been on vacation, you turn the water spigot on and it might come out dirty water in the beginning. You know what I mean? If you've been gone for a while, but if, but eventually it'll run the clear um, clear water. So by just simply making a commitment, you don't have to spend much time, but just come up with three ideas every day. It, three ideas. It could be for businesses, three ideas. You could help your neighbor next door. It could be three ideas for what you want to do to your closet. Or, I mean, it can be any kind of ideas, but every day make that a priority. I am going to come up with some ideas and any idea is, and, and again, ask the universe, say, hey, look, I want to be your channel. I want to be your secretary. I mean, like when I write a book or I produce anything or give a talk or whatever, I always want to channel the bigger thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm somewhat limited. I just have this one little human body, but I am connected to this bigger thing. And that's what I want. I want to let that flow through me as opposed to me trying to come up with something because I've only got, you know, what I've learned in the last few years. You know what I mean? It's like there's mm -hmm. so much more. So I want to use that connection. And I think with creativity, that's how, that's why artists come up with so many beautiful things because they're literally channeling this bigger, you know, force, this beautiful force that's always moving, always, you know, creating new and beautiful things. Well, now, I know, Pam, you said, uh, I heard you say, I think the last time I interviewed you, interview you, that you wanted to write and travel. So did you write that down? And how did that open up for you? I just want to show listeners how you can really, your creativity can really uh, bring uh, not only finances, but, you know, help you to live a life beyond your wildest dreams. Well, you know, I always love to travel and I always have loved to write. So I made the intention way back when I was in my early 20s that I wanted to travel. I had no idea how I was going to make that happen. I mean, I didn't have the financial resources to travel, but I wanted to travel. But I was smart enough to know that even though I didn't know how that I could make that happen, I mean, I had no idea, none whatsoever. However, I also knew that I wasn't limited by my own little ideas, that I was connected to this bigger thing. And so what ended up happening by built, putting that intention out there, like, I want to travel and I have to let go of it because I don't know how to do it. I am unable to come up with ideas, how to do it, you know. <laughs> So I gave it over to the bigger thing. And then I literally fell into travel writing. And now I literally get paid to travel and stay in five-star hotels, which is pretty awesome. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, I literally, I say I fell into travel writing. You know, once you make that intention and once you get on that joy and gratitude frequency, then all kinds of mysterious forces will come to your aid. I mean, that's why it's so exciting because literally all these forces will come to you, will come and help like the book might just happen to fall off the the shelf I mean here's what ended up happening to me with you know my first you know official travel assignment I had sent a query letter off to ladies home journal and I had just mentioned you know that I was a freelance writer and that I um 
you know, that I, that as a freelance writer, I got to do a lot of different things. You know, that was like the joy of being a freelance writer is that you had your fingers on all these different kind of pots. And I had mentioned that I had written about picking coffee in Nicaragua and that I had um, written about going to a villa in Jamaica. And so this travel editor or this editor at Ladies Home Journal calls me up. She goes, do you do travel writing? And of course, I, I said, oh, yes, yes. I mean, you know, you never say no to an editor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yes, yes, I do travel. Writing. Well, where are you going next? Well, I wasn't going anywhere, but my friend was going to Tampa Bay. So I said, oh, I'm going to Tampa. And she said, okay, good. I need a story in Tampa Bay, a thousand words, whatever it was, you know, here's your assignment. So I call my friend. I go, can I go to Tampa with you? <laughs> so, you know, so that, I mean, it literally fell in my lap. I wasn't querying her about a query is what you do to get an assignment, a travel or any kind of writing assignment. It's called a query. So I hadn't queried her about travel writing. I had queried her about just being a freelance writer about my particular career and when I think about it now like why did I think someone at Ladies Home Journal is going to write an article would want an article about you know being a freelance writer I have no idea but anyway I had sent it to her I was young I was silly you know whatever but it did lead to travel writing so I ended up doing a whole bunch of travel stories for Ladies Home Journal in the beginning and then I have since gone on to write you know travel articles for all different all the big publications and um, so yeah it's been a real beautiful thing and again even I mean now I've got this book it became a big bestseller but even before that even when I was still not having the financial resources to travel I was traveling all over the world because I was doing the travel writing I mean I'd get you know they'd send me an invitation hey we're gonna go to um, castles in Prague um, would you would you like to go I mean of course I had to write an article about it yeah oh, oh of course yes yes I'll go <laughs> it, on my own dime I wouldn't have been able to afford that yeah. but I but I was invited to go on all these trips I mean I've been on safari in South Africa I've been literally you know Kenya and Namibia I mean I've been everywhere Australia all these places on someone else's dime and again now I'm in a position where you know I could afford to do those things on my own but at the time I wasn't in a position but I would just keep getting these assignments and keep you know getting to travel and again when you're a travel writer um, they want to show you they want to put their best foot forward you know they want to show you the best of what they have so they take you to the best restaurants they put you in the nicest hotels you get to meet all the cool artists and craft people so I mean it really is just like this plum job I'm telling you and I literally fell into it all I said is I want to travel and I want to write and I mean I didn't even know how that was going to happen I mean see that's the thing when you give it up to the universe I mean if I decided to compose a plan or most people say they think I want to travel so they'll come up with a plan well okay I'm gonna save up for 20 years or, yeah you're, you know what I mean they'll come up with right. their plan well that I I knew I couldn't come up with a plan so I had to let it go so I think that's a real key component is being humble enough or or maybe smart enough to know that I didn't know how to do it you know what I mean but um or not naive, naive enough maybe to even think it could be possible I mean in some ways you have to be willing to to you know anything you can't believe is possible will never be possible for you so you do have to be willing to believe it's possible but you also have to know that maybe you don't know the best way to make it happen but that the universe does and, you know, and so, Pam, what happens is the more that you're grateful, oh, God, you sent me on a trip to France. And then the more you're grateful and thankful and appreciative, the more comes to you. So I'm sure that the more trips that you were assigned to take, the more grateful, the more odd you are awestruck you were and the more uh, increase that came into your life and so I just I'm so glad you shared that so that listeners can hear that they can just start where they are and make an intention and even be grateful for it even before it manifests right just be grateful that you are connected to this force that knows how to make it happen be so grateful for that I mean that's like our number my number one gratitude is that I may not have the resources, but I know somebody that does. I've got a rich father in heaven, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I, you know, term it that way, but yes, I understand. I'm connected to, the, to a rich universe. I am part of this very abundant universe. And that's the other way to be, to get grateful is, to, you know, you think about the abundance of the universe. I mean, look at any tree. I mean, can you even count all the leaves on a, on a tree? No. can't even count. That is an abundant universe. This thing about scarcity, that is a learned behavior. So it's really really artificial scarcity and I talk a lot about that in this book about the idea that 
we've been sold a bill of goods. You know, our cultural construct tells us there's not enough. Our cultural con construct tells us there's, you know, you, there's never enough. You have to work really hard. It doesn't tell us the world is abundant. The world has more than enough for everyone. But that's not what we're taught. So we learn this artificial scarcity. And then we're all coming from that place of artificial scarcity. So, um, so anyway, that's by, by becoming grateful, we learn that that's not true, that so much of what we learned is not even true. But we're going to create it and produce it in our life over and over and over again as long as we think that's the state of the world. So true. So if a person is complaining and, and kind of grumpy and not grateful, are they in the vibration of scarcity? And if, you, if you're grateful, are you in the vibration of abundance and more than enough? Yes, most definitely. When you're in that gratitude, you're like, wow, you're just so excited about everything. So you're open. You're not complaining. You're not in another moment. You're right here and you're open. And then, then it just starts all miraculously, you know, falling into place. Well, well, Pam, do you recommend should people, you know, people like to know formulas. So would you recommend that people write down what they're grateful for? Should they speak it out? What should that look like for them? Or should they customize and tailor it according to their own lifestyle and personality? Well, that's always a good idea, but I think I might have shared this on my last interview with you, but I do love this and I talk a lot about this. So I'll, I'll share it again, okay. what I call my AA 2.0 program. And um, of course, you know, we've all heard of the first AA program. It's a 12 step program and I'm all about smooth and easy. So this is a really easy gratitude program and I call it AA 2.0. So the two steps are this, and this is so easy. You get up in the morning and this is what I say, I go, something amazingly awesome is going to happen to me today. And this has kind of become my, my catchphrase. Like every morning I pronounce to the universe, it's something magical, something mysterious. And I say amazingly awesome. It may not be grammatically correct, but that's the AA, amazingly awesome. And every day I pronounce it something amazingly awesome is going to happen. So I've set up that intention. You know, first thing in the morning, before I brush my teeth, before I walk to the bathroom, before I do anything, I have set that intention to the universe. Something awesome is going to happen to me today. So that's the first thing. So that's the intention. So the second step of it is I have this, what I call my little possibility posse and it's four friends. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. I text them three gratitudes from the day before three amazingly awesome things that happened to me from the day before. And the thing that's unique about this and why I really like it is they have to be different. When we started, when we launched this program, um, three and a half, four years ago, um, we made the commitment that we would, we would text each other these gratitudes and they had to be something different. Because I've always been, oh, I love my daughter. I'm so grateful for my career. You know, I've always been big on gratitude. But in this practice, I'm looking for new things. So I'm out there. I mean, I'm like, I'm a spy. You know, I'm out there looking for <laughs> all the miracles, all the blessing, all the great things that are happening. I mean, that's my job. I've got to report these to my, my possibility posse about, you know, something cool and something new. So I'm on the lookout. So, you know, we're going to see what we're looking for. If we're looking for those complaints and the woe is me, we're going to find that. There's plenty of evidence of that out there in the world. No question. It's out there. However, once we start looking for the blessings and the miracles, there's also way more evidence of that. In fact, you really cannot believe how much abundance that we're all missing out on because of our little, you know, our being on that frequency of there's not enough, that artificial scarcity that we've all, you know, bought into. Well, Pam, what would you say, you know, what kind of times we're living in with Tara and all of the things that are going on in the U.S.? Speak to that. How can people use gratitude and be grateful? Can we collectively begin to change things in the world with gratitude and joy? I am so glad you asked that question because right now the world is screaming out for a whole team of people that are radioing in this new frequency of gratitude and joy. We are 
all connected. Every mm -hmm. last one of us is connected. And so when I raise my frequency, when I raise my vibration, it, it goes out into the whole planet. When you raise your vibration, so actually that's a really powerful thing we can do for each other. And I think like when we do it together, it even you know makes it grow exponentially. So yes, I do feel that we have to take our attention off of the old story, off of the story we read on the news, and we have to put our attention on what could be possible. Because if we keep looking at what we see now, we're gonna keep getting what we see now. I mean, we literally have to take our attention off of that and start saying thank you for this connection that we all have, for the fact that the world is abundant, for the fact that there really is no scarcity except for we've created because we believe the world's, you know, scared that we right. believe the world's scary. And in fact, I, I'm, I've been meaning to look this up. A friend of mine, you know, because I, again, I think we get what we're looking for in the world. And this is a guy who's really super positive. He said, you know, of course, we're all talking about all these news stories. He goes, oh, you know what? I turned on my radio the other day, turned on NPR. And he heard this story. He was this guy. They were interviewing the Stanford I don't know, anthropologists or sociologists or something. And he said, really statistically, he said, we're actually having less terror attacks right now. I mean, you know, it's like, what? But, you know, it's just all in our face. You know, yeah. it's like we, we've wired our nervous system to think this is what's normal and that this is happening everywhere. But actually, if you look at the statistics, if you look at what's really reality, that actually the world is a safer place. And I know it, that's not the dominant paradigm or the story that's going around right now, but that is actually the truth. And I think we need to hear more and more stories. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm, I am gonna look up that story because my friend turned that on and he heard this guy being interviewed and he said it was just so heartwarming because it really showed that, um, and even the thing, you know, about some of the, you know, the Black Lives Matter, right. and, and you can tell me how you feel about this is that, one of the good things to come from this is that now more white people know that this is happening. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, my, like my black friends will say, well, we've known about this forever. This is nothing new. You know what I mean? But now um, the white people are so much are aware of it too. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. that's probably the good side of it is that because once we realize this, we don't want this anymore. We don't want that kind of a, a situation. You know, we want to love, we want to, you know, open to possibility. We don't want that. So, so you know what I mean? There's always the, you know, the good side to be found from it too. So, so anyway, it's kind of how it looks. Sometimes it's like, what are we focusing on? You know, there's good to be found in, in everything. Well, you, well, you know, I, I am, you guys know, I am, a, I'm a, a African-American woman. And um, so I understand uh, both sides. And, and I was saying to my white friends, I said, now, Dr. King, he had, a, a, a marching and a strategy a, and my hope is that there will be peaceful market a, a marching but then a strategy attached to it and a lot of my white friends are saying now wow I didn't realize that I, I'm awake to that now but my focus is on world peace what can I do how can I change? How can I send more love and peace and understanding to the world? And I think if we all come together, you know, the power of love is so powerful and just gratitude for even the differences that exist in all of us and, and, and acceptance of that, that's a powerful place uh, from which we all can come together and really just live in a remarkable, a loving world that's my take on that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and so being grateful is just so 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 important and, and so you know Pam I want to say this to the listeners about you you know I really like you you you're very oh. I told you you were really fly which you didn't know what that was I had to explain <laughs> it to you you know and and so uh but you're very humble you're very uh, you you're very much about serving and really helping others, even though you are extremely successful. And I was kidding with you before we got started. And I said, "Do you know that you are a celebrity and smart and a millionaire?" And and you were saying, "You know, I don't really feel that way, but I love the simplicity, but but still the science that you have." Um, shared in your books and in this book where people can just take it you know 30 days and do one two three four the how to's of how to really walk in this whole thing about you know gratitude 
Right. And so, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, there literally is this earnings report sheet. So you start, you know, say if your 30 days begins today mm -hmm. and then you do, you know, the practices that I recommend. Again, I call them party games because I think a lot of us are trying too hard. You know, we have to kind of just mostly surrender. So I call them party games. Like the, the more fun we can have, the more joy we can have, the more this stuff works. So that's it's just always so important to really, you know, make this thing fun, make it enjoyable don't make it as something oh i have to do this or i have to do these seven steps it's like no i'm going to celebrate what could be possible so anyway so it, you start at a particular day you start with this little earnings report sheet like this is how i feel right now about you know these five areas and then you do these things for 30 days and then i have four gifts that people will get from doing this and these are um, there's, it's a gift from the natural world, mm -hmm. um, a sign, a, a, a direct sign from the universe that you're on the right track, um, a message from the other side. I mean, I really kind of don't believe there is an other side, but you know what I mean? We always talk about the other side, you know, people that have passed over and you'll get a message from, you know, maybe a dearly beloved relative or something. And then also you will get clear evidence that something you have long held as truth, you will see that it's not necessarily true. You know, some baggage that you might be hanging on to or some, you know, old belief that's holding you back. You will find very clear evidence that that's not really the way it has to be. So these four gifts are guaranteed for people that do, you know, the process um, from this book, you know, Thank and Grow Rich. You know, I just love that. You know, when you were talking, something happened to me. Um, I'm in the middle of of a re make a, a making closing on a big deal, and so it's been a it's been a longer process than I uh, than I initially thought that it would be. But what happened is a, a, a dear friend of mine said that she was coming out of Bible study, and she said, "Constance, I saw two rainbows," and 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 I'm like you did and she said I think that's a sign for you she said because you know rainbows are a sign of covenant she said I saw two she asked me have you have you ever seen two rainbows before I said no I have not so about two days later I was just searching on YouTube and I saw this one guy which I can't even pronounce his name and I just felt led to listen to his uh, recording I don't even know what he was teaching on, but toward the end, this is what he said, Pam, we're talking about getting signs. He said, you know, I was in a really difficult place and I walked outside my home and I saw two rainbows and I'm like, oh my God. And so my thinking was, what are the chances of me choosing his YouTube video out of billions of videos that I could have chosen. So for me, that was a sign from God, you know, about the deal that I was working on. So I just wanted to share that with my listeners, that it's not really spooky. And the, what Pam is sharing is really great. I believe that when you're in that place of joy, love, and gratitude, that you do get those signs. You do get those signs. And one of the things that you, you'll probably get a certain certain thing that will be your sign, your specific uh -huh. sign. Like, for example, Pope Francis, who I think is really a loving, wonderful Pope, he says that whenever he's troubled or whenever he's needing some kind of like little nod from God that, hey, I'm right here, he will see a white rose. So, you know, that's wow. like his personal sign. And so I think all of us have a thing. I have a friend, um, her name's Enola, and whenever she's she sees a crane, you know, the bird, the crane, not the not uh -huh. the construction rig, she sees a crane. So I think you know, the universe will have a sign for each of us that um, hey, you know, you're on the right track, um, you are loved, I'm here for you, I got your back. So that's you know, that's what people will find out what their particular sign is, you know, their thing. Like I love the double rainbows. I mean, that's just a beautiful sign. And I had never heard of double rainbows before. And I said to her, what are the chances <laughs> of me choosing his video? I don't even know this guy. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And so, Pam, how can people uh, get your new book that will be released? I know I'm going to get it. Tell them about your website. What are you doing next? What's going on in your life? What, where are you traveling? Are you writing another book, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> well... That, that's a lot of questions. I um, 
the the book will be should be available at any bookstore, you know, when it's released. Of course, it's always on Amazon. I think it's already on there for pre-order. In okay. fact, I, I mentioned it one day on my blog or on Facebook or something. I said, hey, guess what? My book is now available for pre-order. And like so many people pre-ordered it that it went to like number one in a particular category in Amazon. Like it must have been um, New Thought. I don't know what it, but it was some category. It's like, whoa, that's really cool. All I did is mention it on Facebook <laughs> and it, it shot, and you know, just for that day, you know, so people did pre-order. So it is available for pre-order now. So, but it'll be at all the bookstores. It should be around, you know, once. And also I did record the audio version of it as well. So mm -hmm. I know when I did E squared and E cubed, you know, they both have audio books, but it took, you know, several months afterwards for us to do that. But this one, you know, Hay House wanted to release it at the same time. So the audio book and the, um, the book book will both be available at the same time in August. And then as far as what I'm doing, I do have another book that I've actually already turned in that will come out in 2017. And it's funny you had, you picked to talk about creativity of the five forms of capital that, you know, that I talk about in this book. It, it, it is specifically a about creativity and about how again God is the great kahuna you know the big creator and that we are all pieces of you know God and that we are all creators also so the next book uh, it's untitled at this point but I, it will be about creativity and spirituality so that is the next book it's at the editors you know it's again it doesn't come out for another year so you know it'll go back and forth between me and the editor but that that will be next after this gratitude book and then I'm still you know doing the travel writing I'm going to Colorado in about a week and then to Montreal and um, then to New York I'm giving a workshop there and then also um, you know gonna hang out with my sister in New York go see some plays so yeah I've got some fun things coming up on the horizon I'm going to Thailand in the fall I'm excited about that to give wow. a workshop there it's like it's called like the Divas Workshop or something <laughs> like that. So that'll be fun. <laughs> That's a perfect fit for you, Pam, I oh. tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell them I'm flying constantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm looking on Amazon right now and thinking Grow Rich is on there. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So people can, I'm going to strongly encourage people to go and get it. I'm, I'm certainly going to purchase it. And Pam, I am so glad that God connected our paths. You are such a powerful woman, so encouraging. I love how fun you are, how free you are. I love your hats. And <laughs> uh, just so thankful that you took the time and talked to people all over the world today. And by the way, you can her, her website is pamgrout.com. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. You did ask me that. I forgot to mention it. Yes, Pamcrab.com. <laughs> and I have a blog on there with lots and lots of fun little articles, you know, real positive little bits of information on there. And I think, you know, people really enjoy getting that. So people can subscribe. It's totally free. You know, so they can go there and, you know, get on my blog and, you know, subscribe to my, I guess it's called a, I don't know, a list or something. But anyway, there I, I send these out totally free and I don't try to ever sell anything or solicit anything. It's just all for, you know, it's my gift to the world. You know, I'm I'm out here trying to change the dominant paradigm. So that's that's my mission. You're not trying, you're doing it. Okay. And, and I'm thankful hey, to God a, for thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> I'm reminding you of that. Yeah. Well, once again, this is Constance Arnold. You can email me at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And of course, my website is fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And as I say every week, remember this, God loves you deeply. I'm crazy about you. You know that I love you. And remember this, the best is yet to come. You better believe it. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com.